Welcome to the road test review on the Sincerian ESS Environmental Sensor Shield. Today we're going to have a look at setting it up and seeing what it can do. Now when you get first get yours, it's going to come in a snazzy little box like this. Inside that you're going to have a little bit of information right down in there in a card. Go ahead and read that. It's basically going to tell you what's printed on everything. Go to the website, download the file, and uh, add it to your library. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we're on the Sincerian website. We're going to go down to the please download library in the source code and, get, and getting started. Now, uh, there's not much information here because uh, it's not needed. You don't need a whole ton. Everything's going to be on the GitHub. When you go to the GitHub, that's where you're going to find a lot more information, diagrams, other uh, things as well. Uh, loads of information there. So let's go ahead and go there. So now that we're on the uh, GitHub page, we're going to go ahead and go clone for download. And then we're going to download the zip. I've already done this. So once that's finished downloading, just confirm that you have it in your folder here in your downloads and then we'll go ahead and open up our Arduino IDE and add that to the libraries. We have the IDE up we're going to go ahead and click on sketch and then include library and then we're going to go add zip library and then we're going to go to our downloads folder where we had that. We're going to go ahead, select it, open it, and then it will add to our library. Now that that's there, we should be able to go to the examples here. And then we'll scroll all the way to the bottom. And we will see six different options here. What we're going to do is we are going to go to the top one here. Now this one here is basically going to run your temperature, your RH, your TVOC, and your CO2. So that's what's going to be logged. If you want to go into it further, let me show you here. Uh, tools, serial monitor, and now it should be displaying our output data. Now that we have this, um, one thing we can do is we can add a little bit of code and that way we can actually have it so it will display, you know, temperature equals, RH equals, TVOC equals, and CO2 equals. That way we can kind of read it and see your rolling total and it's separated. We don't have to go in our heads and and remember which one is which. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I got confused with the CO2 and the TVOC. If you're wanting uh, it to record more more data uh, and have that so you can do um, time stamping and, and things like that, you can download this program here. It's called Cool Term. Term. It's Roger Myers Freeware. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. Basically, you're going to want to use uh, the cool term one. Yes, there is ads. I'll go ahead and I will download that and install that so you can get a quick look at what that looks like. Okay, the download is done. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. So now in our downloads folder, we're just going to go ahead and extract to cool term. And then we're just going to open it up, run the file there. And let's bring it over here. Let's close that guy out. Um, now, yeah, like I said, you can have other code for reading this to display what it's supposed to be. Um, and basically, I'll put uh, a little bit of code in the uh, Element 14 uh, road test page and you can copy and paste that into your Arduino IDE and Run that and you'll see what I mean when it comes to 
the program, the only thing I was really missing was a timestamp. So I wanted a quick and easy way to do it. And that's when I found this cool term. So I'm going to go ahead and close out the Arduino ID for a moment. Now, all we have to do is go to connect and it should, nope, we need to go to options and select the right COM port. Okay. And there we go. And now we should be able to connect. So now we're getting the data from the, the serial uh, data being transferred into here. Now, right now it's not set up for um, date and time stamping. So to do this, all you want to do, disconnect, clear, and then we're going to go to options again. You're going to want to add the timestamps to receive data. This will help you in future, you know, you know, a quick and easy way to do up diagrams and graphs and finding out what time of day things were happening. And bam, you, you have this unit that you can quickly plug in and put it to work without much hassle. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to connection, capture text file, and go to start. Now it's going to come and bring us up here and then we're just going to select where we want it. So I'm just going to put it in our downloads folder and let's go ahead and connect and I'll show you that output file. So with this output file there is one flaw on this way which I really didn't care for and that was when I was copying from the document it created into uh, an Excel document. I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect that. So that's how you set up and use the cool term. Is it the best idea? Not really, but I'm going to show you the file. Maybe for collecting data that is 5 or 10 minutes in duration or something small, uh, this would be the ideal solution. I wouldn't use this as a long-term data collector. Uh, I would just use the serial and um, eventually add time stamping to that. It's going to look like this. So this is one that I had done before and it's about four and a half megabytes in size. So it's a fairly decent size file. Basically it is not smooth with its logging by any means. Now I have 24 hours worth of data here that I don't want to go to waste. I want to actually use it, but unfortunately I can't right at the moment. Right now what I'm doing is I'm fixing it all in um, Microsoft uh, Access. And basically what I'm doing is just going through and editing everything. So I would just Go like that and delete record and then 56.470 and 465, oh, 463. So, what this also did was it put a line a space between every entry so I needed to remove those uh, lines and I'll give you an example this is what it looked like when I opened it up into Excel now I thought it would work but it seems like a four and a half uh, megabyte uh, file just isn't its cup of tea so I will show you that here and this is how it looked when I imported it into LibreOffice, into Excel, anything that I would do, it would do that. And then when I would go to try to um, basically filter and sort everything, it would lock up and I would be out of luck. So 
I spent uh, a whole day just trying to get Excel to work properly and LibreOffice and finally I found Access the only solution to transport my larger data file into but that's all right because it allowed me to select um, the uh, kind of make it look a little bit cleaner so if that output could be changed on the cool term just a little bit just a little bit then I think it would be a great program um, but right now I think just doing a daily uh, 12 hour log in the serial monitor m might be the best route to go. I'm just going to load up Excel again here with my original one. Uh, this is by using the serial monitor. Now I don't have dates and, and times on it, but this was the more idealistic uh, solution for me. Uh, so I have two readings here, uh, one on the left and one on the right there. Uh, one is indoor and one is outdoor. And I'll just go ahead and I will show you this guy here. So I have the values here for the temperature indoors, outdoors, the average, the maximum, and the minimum amounts. And that goes for each of the RH, uh, the CO2, Oh, um, that's supposed to be TVOC, and this is CO2, and this is TVOC, CO2. So now that's how it looks, and it's not that bad. Um, running it this way basically I just want to know what the minimums and the maximums are you can do a lot more with this data bring up some charts and graphs and uh, have a lot of fun with it that way but I'm not going to get into all that today um, maybe in a future video I'll explain how to um, collect the data with uh, your Arduino and this uh, a little bit uh, in more depth but uh, for now, this is as far as I'm going to go with it. I will have this graph here put on, or this uh, readings here put on the road test page. So go and check it out. And once I get the database for um, the readings for the one day, I will certainly uh, be posting those up as well. With this board, I'm going to have to say it is one of my favorites right now for the Arduino um, just because it's completely simple 100% you could get anyone in on using this board and playing around. Okay so the one thing I did try to do was I tried to set up an LCD screen onto the uh, Sincerian board since there was no um, uh, pins for it to be able to connect. I had to directly solder to it and basically all I did was I tried using the empty digital uh, pins here uh, to get it to work um, but it didn't work so I had to go with okay I have to run with the I squared C connector that is on the bottom and that should be right down here so there will be your four pins on the bottom of the board I did try to add the LCD to the board that didn't work so I ended up um, basically what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to uh, find another method to output uh, the data onto a display. Not a huge deal. I just have to order something and voila, done deal. Um, so I can use the uh, connections on the bottom of the board. You will find on the bottom of the board, there is your connection there. Unfortunately, I don't have a screen 
that I can connect to with that um, at the moment. I don't know why. Uh, it would certainly make things a lot easier. As you can see, I've written all over the board here. Basically what I was trying to do was run the LCD directly off the board and um, directly soldering to it. And then, um, but for some reason it wasn't working. I could probably go with using a couple of the analog input channels, but uh, I'll have to play around with that more. Realistically, it's just quicker to uh, order an LCD that will work uh, right away. So that's what I'll do. Uh, but if anyone's interested in me trying to figure that out, I will certainly try to do more work on that to get the pin out there. If you get the opportunity to grab one of these boards and you just want to learn, uh, this board is pretty versatile. Basically, it's going to get you started with sensors. It's going to get you started with programming uh, with the Arduino ID and other items as well. And you're going to learn a lot just from using this board. So to me, it's also a great tool for learning. Uh, I've, I thought at first, you know, okay, it looks pretty simple. And that's because it is. It's quick and easy to set up. The amount of projects that you can do with this is quite astonishing in my books. But uh, yeah, it's up to you what you create. So um, I'm certainly going to be playing around with this board more. Uh, keep an eye on the road test page. As I do more things, I will be updating that. When you're on element 14, make sure you click that like button. And you can bookmark it. You can follow it. Uh, that way, any updates, you'll get notified, uh, and, you know, that way you can uh, check it out uh, more. Uh, the, lots of guys are working on their road tests, and lots have finished them on it. So definitely check out their stuff, because there's a lot of really good information uh, on the board. I'm not going to go into the full details of everything on the board. If you can get the chance to pick one up, do it. Sensorian has a lot of sensors and after playing with this I would certainly purchase their products in the future for projects because uh, it performs the way it should and it was quick and easy to use. Mind you not all products are going to be the same but for an Arduino shield this was simple as it gets so if you are just getting into Arduino and you want something to learn sensors with but you don't want to do a bunch of guessing of what sensors uh, are good for what or anything like that just dive into this board and you won't regret it uh, you'll have all the readings you want you can come up with so many little projects for it Anyways, that's it for me. This is the quick overview and review on the Sensorian ESS environmental sensor shield. Uh, the road test, awesome. The board, awesome. Price point, awesome. You can't go wrong with this board, so grab yours today. Thanks for watching, everyone. You have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. Take care, eh?